you know, but definitely one where there was enough for everybody, enough of everything basic and enough opportunity, education, resources. I'm working with Bjorn Lomberg on this, so I'm very happy about that because Bjorn, like, he's the real thing, you know. He's done the work, and so that's very good to have him on board. And Yeah, I really um, enjoyed talking to him. Yeah. yeah. I got a couple other projects underway. I can tell you How about How could them, you have real. time for other projects if you're doing this? Subsidiary organization. Mm. You know, like, I got a lot of people around me who are doing their work, you know. So if I don't micromanage... And I provide people with maximal autonomy and try to get committed people. You can distribute the effort, which you have to, as much as possible. And then who knows what's possible, you know? So, so I'm working with my son. We have this app called Essay, which we launched back in November, that teaches people how to write while they use it. And he just developed Dark Mode for that. That was released this week, and we got about 8,000 subscribers on that. Dark Mode meaning? Dark Mode. You can use it at night. Mm-hmm. Without blinding yourself, and so it teaches you how to it teaches you how to write while you use it. It's a word processor, but it teaches you how to write and to think because if you learn to write, you learn to think, and it teaches you how to edit. You know, to concentrate on each word, to evaluate every phrase, to evaluate every sentence, to evaluate the organization of sentences within paragraphs and paragraphs within sequenced properly within the essay, and to think about how to produce a set of thoughts and then how to critically evaluate them. So that's fun. That's going very well. We have, like I said, about 8,000 subscribers now and about, I think it's about 80,000 users. And so that's a good project because we'd like to teach a million people to write. I think the ordinary person, if they used essay instead of a standard word processor, the first thing they wrote would be the best thing they ever wrote right off the bat because we built the tools right into the software like it steps you through the process of writing how so So, well well one of the features for example is um so imagine that you uh imagine that you want to write about something whatever it is the first question is well what what problem are you trying to solve what's the question here and then there's an injunction in the documentation if the question that you're trying to solve doesn't grip you then you're starting the whole bloody thing off with a lie like it has to be something you care about. It has to be something that grips you. So it has to be a question you want the answer to, like the questions you ask in the podcast. And then what? Well, then you write down what you think. And if you don't know enough, go read. And then write down what you think. And don't worry about ordering it. Just get it down. And then it steps you through. It's like, okay, here's a paragraph you wrote. Well, break the paragraph into sentences. Now, here's a little box that opens up. Write five variants of the sentence. Shorten it. Make it more concise. Write five variants that makes that sentence precise. When you get a better sentence, hit click and it'll snap into the essay. And then there's another module that helps you move the sentences around. So here's your paragraph. Well, maybe there are too many sentences in it and the sentences aren't in the right place. Order the sentences so that each paragraph is like a little coherent essay. And so then do the same thing with the paragraphs. If you run through the... So we ask people, separate production from editing... Get the, get the question right. Do your research. Separate production from editing. Overproduce, then edit. Edit for words. Did you use the right word in every... Is every word the right word? Is every phrase the right phrase? Are the phrases organized into proper sentences? Are the sentences sequenced properly? And so that's the editing. That's, and that's, there's no difference between that really and critical thinking. So that's the, that's the essay app. And I used that process for my students, earlier iterations of this, and by the third draft of the essays they wrote, they wrote the best essays they ever wrote in their life. Like, this actually works. It's how I write, by the way, for whatever, whatever utility that might be. You know, it is how I write. I tried to formalize that. And, and then with my daughter, Michaela, I've started this Peterson Academy, and our plan, this is a funny plan, we want to drive the cost of a bachelor's degree down to $4,000. And so we've got 30 professors on board so far. I've been able to identify stellar lecturers from all over the world. We bought a studio in Miami. We have the professors come there. We try to be very hospitable and to treat them well, which doesn't generally happen at universities, by the way. And uh, they lecture four, they give four two-hour lectures on whatever they really want to teach about. And we just, they have a lot of autonomy, you know. We're not 
constraining them. It says, the rule is, we'll put an audience together for you in the studio. We want you to teach what you love at the edge of your ability. And uh, we'll offer that to as many people as we possibly can. We're pursuing accreditation with, through a variety of different avenues. So we hope to be able to, what we'll do is take two or three of those eight-hour lectures, bundle them together. That'll give you one university credit. We want to we want to get actual credit for it. And then we're planning as well, we hope. So imagine we sell, we, we have, charge tuition, um, and we'll try to keep that low cost. Like I said, we want to knock the cost of the whole degree down to $4,000. That's 95% reduction in cost. That's the plan. And then if you're in the developed world, we'd like to offer you the opportunity to pair yourself with a student in the developing world who couldn't afford it, and we'll, put, give, that, we'll give them the, the opportunity for free, but they'll be like your partner. So that should produce some interesting partnerships between people, you know, but also give people who don't have access to high quality university level education a real in. And we are talking to some different institutions, you know, mortar and brick institutions about how accreditation might be pursued and how we could partner with them to also offer people other elements of the university experience that you can't easily virtualize. And we've developed a good app that is adds a social component to it so that people can discuss the lectures while they're while they're watching them and you know can make social contacts and maybe have meetup groups in different cities and so we want to universalize higher education and then we're going to we're going to set the grading system in stone so the grade you'll get for this university will be your performance so there'll be no grade inflation so so what we're hoping too is that if we're going to also, you know, amalgamate it with this essay program so that all our graduates will be able to write. We're hoping that a degree from this university will indicate to employers a true level of competence. And so that's the plan. And we've got, like I said, we have 30 professors on board already. I recorded three lectures for it now, one on the Sermon on the Mount, so that was really fun, one on, it'll be a two-part one, but I did the first half of Nietzsche's Beyond Good and Evil, and I did a eight-hour summary of my book, Maps of Meaning. And so we have all sorts of other people who are, you know, from Cambridge and Oxford and Stanford and MIT, and, and then people from outside the academy, too, who are brilliant. Jonathan Pajot just did a series on symbolic thought. He's absolutely brilliant. Deepest religious thinker I've ever met. Old Testament prophet, man. Something to see.